So guys, today's topic, it is, um, it is the 7th of April, uh, 2021, and it is the birthday of one of our partners, Mr. Chase Bacon. So I'd like to kick off this, uh, this Zoom with a rounding rendition of the birthday song uh, called Happy Birthday. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. To you. Happy birthday to you. To you. Happy birthday, dear James. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, James. Congratulations. You only turn 18 once, man. So <laughs> thank you. Proud right, of you, buddy. Appreciate um, it. Man, look at Chase and his pig. That is, awesome. <laughs> that is absolutely awesome. That's very cool. Guys, happy birthday, Chase, on a real serious note. Um, so, guys, I want to share something with you. We talk about uh, something um, called controllables uh, quite a bit, controlling the things in life that you can control, um, not just in our business, but in our lives in general. Okay. And there's only a few specific things that we really can control. What I want to share with you guys, um, I've got a coach. I've got a, a, a personal coach, um, sales coach, leadership coach. He coaches me in all facets. His name's Gary Michael. Uh, Gary's been my, my coach now for coming up on six years. Um, my business uh, was struggling mightily about six years ago, and I decided to make some specific changes. And one of the things I've been avoiding because of the additional expense was getting a coach. And um, in it, we've, we've probably all heard the the, the saying being um, dollar uh, being uh, dime uh, dime wise and dollar dumb. Okay, that's what I was being. I was saving uh, a certain amount per month, but in in all reality, not getting that coaching was costing me far more each month uh, in lost production, lost recruiting, just because of my mindset wasn't there. And Gary really helped me get my mindset where it is. And to this day, I still, even though things are going much much better than they were. I don't want to fall into that trap of, oh, it works so well, I quit doing it. So I continue to uh, pay Gary uh, a hefty fee every month for really for accountability because my, my old accountability partner, um, Peter Ferre, retired about a decade ago. So it's really nice to have that person outside of someone at Family Heritage that can give me kind of an objective viewpoint. So I'm going to share with you seven minutes of, uh, of wisdom from Gary Michael. I hope you guys will take some serious detailed notes because there are some definitely some nuggets and some great takeaways in this, and we can discuss a few of those uh, as soon as it's over. So with that, that being said, uh, Mr. Gary Michael. So often we get in our heads about things we can't control. So I want you to write this note down. And this note is this. There's only four things in your life, only four that you can control. The first thing that you can control is your attitude. You know, if you got up this morning and you're tired, I'm just tired, I can't wait to go. You have no idea what I'm going through. You control your attitude. I don't control your attitude. You control your attitude. Okay, the second that you control is your self-talk. What you say to yourself when you talk to yourself. And you guys saw me that first day I did that circle. Remember that circle up there? You have negative self-talk. That's going to be poor self-esteem, poor self-image, body language, how you look, how you feel, etc. And if you have poor self-esteem at 3 o'clock, at 6 o'clock, what do you got? You got poor what? Poor activity. Remember, the low self-esteem gives you poor activity. And if you have poor activity in this business or in life, what's going to happen to the results at nine o'clock? Not going to be good, right? So, so if you have positive self-talk, I'm on fire. Everything I do turns to gold. This is, I'm a winner. I have support people. I help people. I'm the top one half of 1% of business executives in the world. I'll settle for nothing less. I'm present when I'm with my daughter. What are the things that are important to you that are going to be your positive self-talks? You can control what you say to yourself when you talk to yourself. You know that most people in this world, they get up and the first thing they do is they go, I'm still tired. They hit snooze. The first thought that goes in their mind is I'm still tired. They start their day with a negative thought. <laughs> That's how most people live. All right. 
Third thing you control is what you put on your calendar. I'm hoping today that this will all start to come together with you. Some of you are staying until tomorrow, but um, it's all going to start to come together. For those of you that are just getting licensed, okay, did I already sign up for my classes? Have I put on my calendar what hours I'm going to study each day so I can figure out when I'll be done with my study? Have I taken that big leap of faith and gone on and scheduled my exam? Right? Because if you schedule your exam, that's going to cause you to do the proper study and leading up to it. How, how are you going to balance that? How are you going to balance your life? How are you going to balance your kids? What kind of conversations are you going to have with your significant others that I'm starting a business and I need some grace for a short period of time? For a short period of time. You, know, you, you, hear, you notice I didn't say three months, six months. I said a short period of time. I need, I need some grace. I need some wiggle room. I need some you to work with me for a bit. What's that look like for you? Who do you have to have those conversations with? You guys have read the book, Crucial Conversations. Who do you need to have a crucial conversation with when you leave here? And for some of us, no joke, it's looking in the mirror in a crucial conversation with ourselves. You know? So, fourth thing that you control is what you actually do. So whether you're a handwritten calendar guy or gal, or uh, uh, it's on your outlook or whatever it is, are you, you heard that expression, if I don't inspect, don't expect. If I don't inspect, don't expect. So my, my look and I said, this is what I plan to do today. And you're wrapping up at the end of the day, six, seven, eight o'clock, whenever that is for you, five o'clock, whatever. And you go, wow, I actually did what I said I would do today. And we're going to put our self-esteem into our work habits, not our work results. Because that's that, those are the only four things we can control. What most people tend to do is we want to control other people. We want to control other things. If she would just, if they would just. And what I've learned over the years is I'm the most unhappy person when I'm trying to control other people. Because you can't. You just can't. But I want you to write this note down. If I do those four things well, write that down. If I really get serious about working on my attitude, and I get very serious about practicing this self-talk thing, maybe when I say affirmations, you don't even know what that you don't have written them before. You need some help. And I could I could get with any of you guys, like I said, it's a talk that that I give called Millionaire Mindset. And it's, it's an hour, it's like a keynote. It is a keynote. And I'll teach you how to write affirmations so that you can have affirmations so that you can actually have that tool to bounce back quickly. We call it BBF, BBF, bounce back fast. If you want to bounce back fast, you have to have that tool of this positive self-talk that will help you when things get tough, how to bounce back to good stuff. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So... Next time you want to control somebody else or control the situation, take a step back and say, how am I doing with my attitude? <laughs> how am I doing with my self-talk? Did I even calendar out today things that I said I would do so that I can know if I've done it, had a good day? And how did that look at the end of the day based on what I said I would do? That's a huge, it, it was, Gary, give me one tip. What I just gave you guys was that tip. Control the four things you can control instead of trying to control things we can't control. So, guys, that was uh, <coughs> that was my coach, Gary Michael. Let's hear a couple of um, a couple of key takeaways from what Gary said on control the controllables. If you don't inspect, don't expect is what I got out of it, man. That was a, a really huge one for me. Because if you're not taking the time to look at the details of how you're spending your time, then why would you expect to be getting better if you're not fine-tuning, you know, 10 minutes here or five minutes there that results in better outcomes later on? Yep. Huge. Anybody else, guys? What are the, what are the four things that you can control? 
Your attitude. Attitude was number one. Right on. Your self-talk. Self-talk was number two. Who else can share one? Thanks, Ryan. Gil. Control. Okay. What you put on your calendar. What you put on your calendar. And then what you actually do. Yep. And then what you actually do. So yeah, those things are listed um, right here. Things that you can control, guys. Your attitude, your self-talk, your schedule, and then your work stats, what you actually do. Those are things that you can actually control. Guys, Gary referenced the circle. And you guys are probably going, what's the circle? Well, this is the circle, guys. The things you can control are very finite. Those are the things we need to zero in on. It's the target. It's the, it's the center of the target. That's what we can control. So again, write that down. Attitude, self-talk, schedule, and work stats. Guys, ask yourself, I mean, what are you saying to yourself when you talk to yourself? Guys, it's been proven if you're not saying something out loud to yourself that's positive, there's a really high percentage chance that your, your subconscious is saying something negative to you on the inside. Okay, just think about yesterday, guys. Just think about yesterday when you were just kind of in silence. Our mind plays tricks on us. Our mind sometimes will lie to us. Okay, but it's, a, it's physically impossible to say something positive and think something negative at the same time. So for us to control our attitude, we need to control what we're saying to ourselves. Guys, there's actually a book out there called What Do You Say When You Talk to Yourself? That would, that would be a really good book for you to pick up and read. If you're going, I'm not doing this self-talk stuff. That sounds really that's silly. I'm not talking to myself. Guys, if you're in the car by yourself 90% of the time, I get it. Sure, if you got your manager riding with you or somebody else, maybe you don't want to talk out loud. I know a lot of managers that do. They talk out loud right in front of them to themselves, right in front of the people that they're working with and whatever. Who cares? <laughs> Again, who cares? So that, that other person who you're worried about what they think of you, are they paying your mortgage? Are they paying your rent? Are they making your credit card payment or keeping the, the, the AC on in the summertime? No, that's on you. So who cares what they think? Okay. Um, you know, your schedule, what you put on your schedule and then what you actually follow through. Guys, we, and actually... Um, these are all actually uh, reflected in our what's called a VPF. Our vision is what we come up with in our head. Uh, our schedule is our is putting it on paper. That's our that's our plan, and our follow through. That's what we actually do. That's our work stats. So this comes through in every 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 facet of what we do, guys. There's a few things that you can influence. Okay, you can't control them, but you can influence, and that's pe other people. You can influence interruptions. Okay, you can turn off your cell phone during the day and just turn it on twice a day to check messages. Okay, if that's a big distractor for you, if that keeps you um, in the car more than it needs to, turn it off or put it in the glove box. Um, and customer investment, you can influence that. Things that you must accept and can't control at all are external circumstances, what other people are doing, they, what, what other people think, rules and regulations. Can't change those, not unless you're a senator. And preconceived notions by other people. If people have a preconceived notion that all insurance is a scam, whatever, you can't really control that. You're probably not going to sell them a policy or protect their family. That's okay. We don't have to, everybody's not for us and we're not for everybody. So guys, um, by the way, there's a couple of, um, you know, a couple of uh, discussion questions. And this is really for, uh, really for speaking to managers, but it also works for people that aren't managing anybody, but managing themselves because we're all having to manage ourselves, right? So what are your critical success factors? I want to, I want you to encourage you to jot these questions down. What, and write them in the first person. What are my critical success factors? Anyone want to throw out a, a, one or two of those? got some smart people on here 27 of us guys come on what is a what is critically that you do that what do you do that's critical to your success man i gotta um, exercise go ahead zach go ahead please oh yeah i just gotta exercise i gotta get to the gym if i work out i get all the hard stuff out of the way 
Exercise. That's a critical success factor. Great. Chase, you were going to say something? I was actually going to say the same thing as uh, Zach because I mean, recently I've been do or just been waking up early, um, going to the gym, and then um, also just reading testimonials and eagles um, in the morning before I go out to work. Ooh, that's a good one. Reading some testimonials and eagles to get our brains and our head and heart right. That's yeah, huge. Ben, ben I was going to say the same thing. Um, I just started back out yesterday. I uh. Spent Brian Glazinski, uh, my, my first little workout I did. I knew for the longest time it, it was, I was in a slump mentally because I hadn't been working out. And um, yeah, I ain't got no legs today, Lieutenant. Gotcha. Good for you for getting back on the workout train, guys. That's taking care of our bodies is part of taking care of our attitude. We feel, we feel so much better when we're getting some physical stimulation each day. That's great. <clears throat> guys. Danny. Planning, Ryan, that's critical, is planning out our weeks, planning out our day. Absolutely. Guys, do you think- Man, working... just going to work. Get up, go to work. Thanks, Todd. Get out of your car. Yep, going to work, guys. Getting out of your house earlier. Staying out there until after 5.30, you know, working, putting in hours. That's the most controllable thing that we can do is show up, right? They say for salespeople, half the battle is showing up. Guys, the number of demonstrations, that's a pretty critical success factor. You know, when you look at their week after week, we're usually around 70 to 80% of the people that are listed for selling a builder's week or above are also recognized for 25 plus demonstrations and or 40 plus hours. That's a clue. Hmm. Success leaves clues. If I want to be on that list too, and I worked 38 hours last week and I put in 22 demos, I need to improve that. If I keep on going out and working less than 40 hours or putting in less than uh, 25, 30 demos, I'm going to, that's insanity. That's expecting something better by putting in the, by doing the same thing over and over. Not fun. Um, as far as what do we use to track our activity, guys, we use the stat site, right? Pretty, pretty simple. We use our weekly VPF and guys, I'll share with you on your VPF and some of you guys don't don't realize this, but I want to tell everybody. So the five of you getting started this week right now can, um, can, can use this, but under plan stats and entry, I think, I think it's at the beginning of the week when you go under WGP, you actually can go in and put in your, so your personal VPF, sorry, over here at personal VPF, if you click on that, you can go in and go to hours and you can enter in your goal for hours and it'll show you your actual hours, okay? Uh, and so each day when you go in to enter your stats, when you put in your actuals, it's got your plan right next to it. And you can use that as a barometer. Hey, am I on track for what I said I would do? If I'm not, okay, it's Tuesday and I'm three hours behind. Where am I gonna make up those lost three hours before Saturday? Am I gonna make them up by putting in an extra day, Wednesday, an extra hour, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? Or am I gonna work the normal thing Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and put in three hours on Saturday? Or am I just gonna just gonna blow off my commitment? Guys, blowing off commitments doesn't make us feel good. Doesn't give us good self-talk. Okay, doing what we say we do feels feels good. Okay. Um, so, and Patrick, of course, you mentioned you can't inspect unless you expect. Okay. And guys, we do we we use this tool here. Reverse engineer your team your goals into your daily activity, guys. What do we use to 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 do that, to do exactly that in our business. What do we use to reverse engineer? Meaning start, start with the end in mind. What, what's the tool that we all created before the beginning of the quarter to help us know exactly what we need to work each, each, each day and each week? Our VPF, um, our quarterly yes. VPF. Right on. Yeah, it's our quarterly VPF, right? Guys, when we put in it's taking a second to pull up right now. I think it'll, here we go. I just pulled up Johnny McGee's first one I saw here, but Johnny knows, you know, based on a 35% contract, which is pretty close to being gone up based on his average transaction of $848 and based on closing 16% uh, and getting a demo every 2.05 hours. He knows that if he wants to cash flow 1300 bucks, he needs to sell 6,190. 
he knows that based on that $848 of premium on average, he needs to sell 7.3 transactions. So that right there is an area that Johnny can, can work on, closing more on the elite, getting that up closer to a thousand bucks. He knows that based on um, closing 16%, one out of six, to get seven transactions, he needs 7.3 transactions, he needs 45 demos. So he may, he may look at that and go, man, that's a, that's a spot where if I could uh, adjust that from 16% up to 20% instead of one out of six, closing one out of five, then all of a sudden I can get it done in 35, 36 demos instead of 45. And right now, when you combine all that with, a, with getting a demo every little bit over two hours, it's gonna take 92 hours to get 45 demos. To, to, to have 7.3 transactions, to have 6,190 in premium. Most people would look at that and go, you know, I'm probably not gonna be willing to work 92 hours this week. And that's okay. But guys, just like I was talking to Tony Martella, our company's um, VP of uh, operations said, you know, when, when you share that, then you got, you got an option. You can either lower your goal to match your current skill level. When I say skill, hours per demo is a skill, okay? Closing percentage is a skill. Your, your transaction size, that's a skill, okay? If, if you gotta either lower your goal to match your current skills, or you've gotta raise your current skills to match your goal so that you can hit it in a reasonable amount of time. Does that make sense? I, I hope it does. So, yes. so guys, that's, a, that's, that's how we reverse engineer to see exactly what we need to do. And then guys, at the end of the day, it's up for us to do it. Once we know what we need to do, it's up to us. If we need to raise our skill level, when's the best time to raise your skill level? Is it when you're working in your business or is it taking some time at the end of your day to work on your business? End of the day. Yep. Guys, when you're in the middle, when you're in the game, you don't make adjustments to your game plan in the middle of the game, typically. You know, there's a saying in, in, in the sport of triathlon, don't ever do anything for the first time on a race day. I broke that one time because I had a, a guy that did a bunch of races say, oh, you don't need to wear socks for a short race, like, a, like an Olympic distance. And I'd always worn socks for my run. And so I just threw on my, I was doing my first ever Olympic, not even a sprint, but a little bit 10K instead of a 5K run at the end. And I did it with no socks. And guess what? Two miles into that 6.2 mile run, I had blisters on my heels. And I had to deal with those for the next 4.2 miles and it sucked. And so I learned the hard way to um, not make adjustments uh, on race day. So I want to challenge you guys. Are, are you taking some time purposefully? Is it in your calendar that each evening at 7.30 or 8.30 or whenever, that when your day's done, the kids are in bed, you had your meal, that you, got, you have some specific time where you are practicing your craft? you are getting better, you're, that you're gonna be better tomorrow when you go out than you were today. Because if you do nothing different, go out tomorrow, guys, working harder won't get you better results. It'll just get you more demos, okay? It's not gonna raise your closing percentage or your transaction or your hour to demo ratio. That's gotta be something you purposefully work on. Guys, I'll wrap, I'll wrap up on this, uh, this part here, which is huge. And I thought about, because I was looking at this on Monday, uh, the RAF technique. Um, I've had conversations with at least a half dozen of you guys just in the last two weeks about just stuff going on. Okay. Just stuff going on in your life that maybe, maybe we, we look at it as a problem. It's really, it's an event. Okay. And so let me just share this with you. There's certain things in life we can't control like death, natural disasters, or even who buys from us. Top producers realize this. So they focus on controlling the controllable factors. Those include the number of hours we work, number of calls and demos we put in, uh, and our attitude, okay? And our study time, our working on our skills. Uh, one of the challenges in life is that sometimes external controllable, circum uncontrollable circumstances known as problems interrupt our day, okay? Guys, just think about your last week or so. You probably, if you're human, had a problem pop up. Something happened that disrupted your day, okay? That's okay, that makes you human. Okay, we refer to problems as events because the word problem has a negative connotation. Okay, and truly every problem is really an opportunity for growth. When you solve problems, guys, you grow mentally, you grow emotionally. And this is a growth business. 
in the river of life, guys, and we're going to come back to this river raft analogy here in a second. The river of life, there are fighters, there are floaters, and there are navigators. Typically, the ones who are happiest and the most productive are navigators who learn to control their raft to adapt to challenging conditions. Here's a simple technique that will help you better handle and recover quicker from those events. And I want to encourage you guys, write this down. Okay, the raft technique. One is realize that an event is occurring or just recently occurred. Okay, you know, guys, um, breaking up with a significant other or spouse, that's an event. You know, flying home for a wedding, that's an event. It's not a, not a problem, it's not negative, but takes you off the field, that's an event. Okay, a funeral, someone passing is an event. Okay. Uh, number two is accept the situation. It happened. I can't change it. Just accept it. Okay. F, focus on the controllables. You can't bring so-and-so back if they passed away. If, if, if a marriage is dissolved, probably not going to remarry that person. Some people do, most don't. Okay. But you can't control that. Focus on what you can control. Guys, going through a thing in life uh, already an event it can suck already but going through it while making no money for a month just exacerbates the whole thing makes it seem way worse than it really is because now it's messing with you guys we don't have a career where we can just clock in put our brain on the shelf and just flip the burgers for eight hours we, we don't we have to use our brain all day long and to use that brain we have to be engaged we have to be present okay and the last thing, guys, is T is transform the negative emotion into positive momentum. And you do that, guys, with positive self-talk. It's far easier, guys, to act your way into positive thinking than it is to think your way into positive acting. So um, I hope you guys took some good notes on this. There's some great, uh, great material on this. I'll talk to you about the self-esteem trap um, soon. But when we put our self-esteem in our results, that's dangerous. I want to challenge everybody today. Put your self-esteem in your work habits. Put your self-esteem in your ability to put in nine, eight, nine, ten hours a day because you said you would. Put your esteem in doing six demonstrations because that's what's on your demo goal, your, on your goal card this morning. Not, not stopping at five because that feels better. Might feel better in the short term, but it sucks when you look back on it the next day and realize, oh, I had a zero day. I really, I really wish I'd worked another, done another demo and now been on the board. Guys, the, the pain of discipline weighs ounces and lasts minutes, hours. The pain of regret weighs tons and lasts days, lasts a long time. So feel that pain of discipline so you cannot have to feel that pain of regret. Guys, thanks for being on. It is only five days until Presidential Performance Week 2021, the biggest week in our year. Are you ready? Are you listening to MP3s? Are you getting your head right? Have you told your spouse that, honey, I'm leaving early every morning. I'm getting back late. I probably won't be home for 6.30 dinner at all this week, okay? Don't wait up for me, okay? I'm going to be going and seeing yes cards at their home after 5.30 this week. Are you booking those appointments, guys? If you don't normally see people after 5.30 or 6, there's a good chance if you don't set something up, you're going to fall into that trap and probably feel like going home on Monday at 5.30 when you've walked out of your last demo. Set yourself up for success, guys, by booking two appointments for Monday evening and booking three appointments for Tuesday evening, okay? Start at the beginning, okay? Most important uh, appointments you can have are first thing in the morning early and last thing during the day because it gets you out there going and it keeps you out there. So guys, let's get, let's make sure that we're prepared. Let's have the enrollment set up. Let's confirm those enrollments now, make sure that they're happening. Uh, so no surprises. So guys, thanks for being on. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Appreciate you.